An aspect of the Sri and Devani trial that intrigued many was his secret gay life, the details of which were revealed in court. It's a common phenomenon, say some South African Hindu men who have for years suppressed their sexuality for fear of being disinherited. Durban producer Vanessa Tedder spoke to gay men who didn't even want their clothes identified for fear of being recognized by their families. A typical South African Hindu wedding, inspired by the glitz and glamour of Bollywood and steeped in centuries-old rituals. A marriage ceremony not unlike that of British couple Annie and Sriyandiwani, who at the time seemed the epitome of a happy couple. But there was a side to Sriyan kept well hidden, his penchant for gay sadomasochistic sex. That man never ever told us, none of the family members, that he was a bisexual and he slept with men prostitutes. Something about which his new bride and her family had no idea. Many can identify with Sri Indiwani's double life. Durban has an active gay Indian society, and when the sun sets, they can be seen grabbing a few stolen hours away from the pressures of family life. If I were to tell my parents, it would, it would probably go to the religious leaders. Prayer. Beat the gay out of me, so to speak. The gay men we spoke to wanted their identities hidden for fear of being ostracized. Their families find it hard to accept that they will not marry a woman and have children. So they are forced to lie to them. One day I decided to make my mother very happy. Which, I mean, in a way was good. But I know I was lying to her. I had to take my ex's best friend home and introduce her to my mother and my father as well and say, this is my girlfriend. Even some married men hang out at gay clubs. Hey, they're around. I've seen them. I've seen people at the club. I've seen someone very close to me who's got two kids. Well, two older sons. He's got a wife and he was at a gay club recently. And I went to him and said, hi, how are you? Do you know me? And he was like, I can't remember you, but he was out of it. He was drunk. And I said, what are you doing here? And he says, would you like to go to the back? And I said, for what? And he says, oh, we can make out. I said, do you know who I am? And he was like, no, I don't. I said, you're my father's cousin. And I told him his name. And he was like, you know my name? And I said, yes, I know your son and your wife as well. I even gave him his address. And he was like, please don't tell anyone that you saw me here. I said, okay, fine. I would never do that. And you do the same. And then he asked me for my name. And I said, I'm not telling you. And I walked out and I was gone. There's a lot of Indian gay guys that are leading double lives. Family honor and tradition are very much an integral part of Indian homes. And for this 25-year-old gay man, disclosure would be disaster. He is expected to carry on the bloodline. My life is, I'd say, torture, lying. I feel that I'm being deceitful ultimately. The son, the only grandson, I've got a lot of weight on my shoulders as well. I've tried to commit suicide on more than one occasion thinking that that would basically end the pain. It sounds impossible in this day and age, but it's a dilemma faced by many from traditional and conservative families. Gay Indian men say they face hostility at every turn, even violence. I've seen a lot of gay guys who have told their parents, I'm gay. And these people end up with broken jaws. Some were beaten really badly by their peers and their brothers. Some even committed suicide because of their parents finding out. 
In the face of great adversity, though, there are those real love stories that emerge, where families are tolerant and accepting. Like the case of married couple, Joe and Wesley Singh. Their Hindu wedding played a pivotal role in bringing gay rights out of the closet. But it came at a cost. The Indian community, how it is, the typical scenario, the son, the only son in the family needs to marry a woman and you have children and whatnot. And I think the pressure got uh, to my family and then they just like reached breaking point one day. It, it started with like simple fights, arguments, and then it escalated to such a huge thing whereby they actually kicked me out of my house with just the clothes on my back. Joe, though, has a very accepting mother. It was a weekend that uh, he had spent with us. Uh, my mother and him got on the very first day they met. We were friends. They, they were, we were friends and then they became friends thereafter and then she was quite fond of him. Um, and then he was over with us a lot of times. It was parties and beach trips and whatnot. Uh, so it was this particular weekend that he spent with us and um, he stayed over. And for some reason, when he left, my mother asked me, and I clearly remember the day, uh, she says, no, you have something going on with him. And she says, if, if that's what you want, then as, as long as you're happy. When it came to her son's sexuality, Rita Governor's reaction was anything but typical. As an Indian mom, I would have preferred my son being married the way I got him married than me seeing my son laying in a coffin. I, as a mom, I'm happy to see my child happy. I mean, I don't see anything wrong in them being gays. He's very pleasant, he's very respectful, and at the same time, very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> but this kind of acceptance and tolerance runs low. So many gay Indian men end up living double lives. The death three weeks ago of a Johannesburg man who was savaged by three pit bulls is yet another incident involving these supposedly vicious dogs. But what does it tell us about dog owners? Sabelo Skiti has the details. It was an easy summer afternoon, two days after Christmas in Khatview, east of Johannesburg. Two friends, general workers at a local school, had arranged to meet for a festive season drink. <laughs> Next thing, Sam Misimanga heard dogs barking and blood-curdling screams. His friend, 47-year-old Abi Musia, had been attacked by three pit bull terriers. Pit bulls have a reputation as killers. They are muscular with strong jaws, so the injuries they inflict are often deadly. Sam and several passers-by struggled to get the dogs off Messiah, who was bleeding profusely. Eventually, an off-duty policeman shot one of the dogs and the other two backed off. By then, Messiah was breathing his last. His arm had been severed, and he'd sustained massive injuries to his face and neck. The surviving dogs, aptly named Satan and Psycho, were put down by the Germiston SPCA at the request of their owners, Carl and Carla Brousseau. They could be charged with culpable homicide, says Sergeant Stiles Maome of the Primrose Police. If the owners can be found negligent, it will only be determined by the senior public prosecutor after the investigation has been completed. Just go. 
You leave my house alone. You're not allowed to photograph my house. I know oh, you, actually, my you, rights. You, you, you me now. Just stay away from my house. Checkpoint asked the Brousseaus why the dogs were able to get into the street. But it seemed they'd had enough of the media. Leave the people alone, man. The guy is dead. He's dead. Leave him alone no, now. No, no. You, you, know, you know what? You helps make it it's worse. Old news. Yeah. That guy is dead. Leave that man out. He's dead. That's not what happened. It happened. Carl Brousseau said they'd contributed 25,000 rand towards Messiah's funeral and that everyone was happy. AB's friend and partner, Evelyn Snowball, isn't happy at all. I was able to get out of my house. I was able to get out of my house. I was able to get out of SPCA investigator Wendy Wilson says ordinarily after such an incident, dogs are assessed to determine whether they can be rehabilitated. Um, in this case, the severity of the attack is very, very concerning, and dogs that display that amount of aggression, um, it would have to be very, very carefully analysed. Um, in this case, the owners decided that the dogs should be euthanised. One, for the safety of the dogs, to protect them from revenge attacks, and for the safety of the community, to remove that risk from the community. Owners often don't understand dog behaviour, says Wilson. It's alleged that they had a reputation for being aggressive um, and it's very concerning that an owner um, who knew the dogs could get out and were acting aggressive to passers-by didn't take steps to rectify that. Shortly after the incident, the Brousseaus told Bielt newspaper that the dogs had jumped the fence, something they'd never done before. Sam, who lives nearby, disputes this, saying the dogs had got out before. Low, low feeling, man. Them show is three. Is 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 am is mbula ebe. Is mbula la yongat. Mwaba low car and then some kitchi miss. Low speedy. Sabela some low malai is angry. Low made them all smile kids. Aso kan then om om se special. Um, another concerning factor is that one of the dogs was on heat, which changes um, all the dogs' dynamics um, with heightened hormonal um, factors. Different, different things will come into play um, and result in more aggression from the dogs. Dog owners can be imprisoned or fined for criminal incidents involving their animals. A court can also order a person unfit to own a dog. In a case where you have an aggressive dog or you think your, your dog is, is tending towards aggressive tendencies, it's really, really important to seek professional advice and a reputable animal behaviourist or someone that can help you address those dogs' problems before they become an issue. Animal behaviourists have a fair idea of why certain dogs kill, what the warning signs are, and if some breeds are more likely to kill. Different breeds have different characteristics, okay? and those characteristics are what we call motor patterns. Motor patterns are what dogs are bred to do, for example. So if a dog has a very long motor pattern, like a Basset Hound has a really long motor pattern, a Labrador has a really long motor pattern, they tend to be what we call very tolerant dogs. They take very long to get reactive, they take very long to get cross, because they tend to be very tolerant. Karen Pinar says dogs need to be socialised to become familiar with their surroundings. That critical socialization window period that we talk about in dogs <clears throat> is basically the period where you can teach a dog what's normal and what is safe. Once that window period closes, anything new or unfamiliar that the dog encounters, he will automatically label as a danger. The perfect pet dog, regardless of the breed, is the kind of dog that is incredibly tolerant. And the more social the dog is to people, the more tolerant the dog will be of what people do. But certain owners want their dogs to be aggressive and in the case of some terriers, it can spell trouble. A pit bull's motor pattern is, I kill. That's what they're bred to do. See the thing, kill the thing. The faster you can do it, the better a fighting dog you are. That's what they were selected for, which means they've got very short fuses, very low arousal thresholds. They get excited very quickly. Um, you can't change the fact that this is a dog who's been bred to be reactive to certain things. Lindsay Rotenbach of the Pitbull Federation says it's all about the owner. This is not a breed that can be just a dog. This is a breed that needs a dedicated owner and you dedicate it for the next 10 years. Lindsay owns pit bulls and makes sure they can't leave her property. 
You need high walls. You need electric fencing. You need locks on gates. Preferably what you saw there with my yard, it's double gated. So basically he's here and there's two gates before he can get through to my front yard to the gate. It's, it is imperative that you keep the dog in the yard. The Brousseau's wall, in contrast, is very low, although it appears that an attempt was made to raise it. And we, when we go and we speak to people, we say, you know, research the breed. Don't walk in and buy a pit bull. And please don't buy from a pet shop or from a, what we call a backyard breed is, I've got a, two pit bulls, a male and a female. I know nothing about the temperament or my dogs have got papers, so that makes them breeding dogs. Now I breed these dogs and I sell them. What happens is I don't know anything about temperament. I could have a faulty dog. I sell the dog to the wrong home because I've got my money and somebody's child or somebody's domestic ends up being bitten. The brutality of AB's death is hard for his friends and family to come to terms with. Evelyn is battling to find closure. That's all from us this week. Please do give us your feedback. Our Twitter handle is at checkpoint underscore ENCA and our email address checkpoint at ENCA.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Ngepile Mabuse.